more important than these subsidiary motions. Now, so privileged motions are usually ones that can interrupt the meeting because of something which doesn't necessarily have to do anything with the motion that is being discussed. Something which has to be handled immediately, not always urgently, but that which has to be handled immediately and therefore has the precedence to interrupt the meeting, to interrupt the discussion as it is going. Now they also have an order of precedence and there are five of them. And I will explain today whether each motion needs to be seconded or not, whether there is a, the possibility to vote on it or not, and whether a majority vote, a simple majority will do, or if there has to be a quorum and a two-thirds vote. Because that's basically what you need to know in order to be able to move on in the discussion. Because each of the subsidiary and privileged motions can interrupt uh, the, the motion on the table. The motion not on the table, the motion in the room, of course. Yes. The first privileged motion is called for the orders of the day. As Mel did, he saw that I wasn't really introducing enough, so he said, okay, we haven't handled introduction enough, let's call for the orders of the day, let's handle the introduction first. If you're in a session and you know there is an agenda, usually when you have a big meeting, we're talking about sessions with sometimes uh, what, 500 or, or 700 people in the room that need to discuss a certain agenda. If the president skips a point, or if there was a point which was postponed to that certain time, and that time has come, every member doesn't have to wait for the president to give you the right to speak. can stand up and raise the motion to call for the orders of the day, and then the president just gives the orders of the day. You um, don't need a second because everybody has the right to do it. You can't debate it. Everybody has the right to get it. And we don't need to vote on it because calling for the orders of the day is just um, a right that everybody has. And if you have a meeting with an agenda, you're supposed to stick to it. Otherwise, there's no purpose in having an agenda. Now, the second motion on this is to raise a question of privilege. Now, come summer, we might have to, we might be in a situation where we have a meeting and the window is open and maybe the speaker in front doesn't have a very loud voice and maybe in the backyard they're having a party and the people in the back can't hear the speaker. They may raise a um, question of privilege to ask for the windows to be closed or for the speaker to be handed a microphone. The presiding chairman gives them the right there needs to be no second, you don't need to debate on it, and um, there needs to be no vote on it. So, every person in the room has a right to raise a question of privilege. If you think that your rights are not being um, handled fairly by uh, situations that can occur during a meeting. It could be loud noise from the back. It could also be that maybe the airport is, is broken down and it's really too stuffy in here and we want to open a window. Any such thing, such side effects that may interrupt the meeting and make it un impossible for the members or some of the people in the session to follow as they should, they can raise a question of privilege to just handle that situation and make sure that everybody can follow again as they should. Now, third one is called for a recess. Imagine there's a very, very long uh, agenda and two or three hours in the session, people really need a bit of air, nature calls, we want to stretch our legs for a bit, five minutes. Everybody always has the right to interrupt and call for a recess. Now, this, let me just check so I don't say any mistakes. The motion, uh, the recess obviously takes precedence over these two because they come in an order of, of preference. Motion to recess takes precedence and it must be seconded. So you can't just call for a recess as a whim. It must be seconded. It must be that there is other people that also need a recess. It, you can't debate it. A debate usually takes place when there are when many gray zones to push the question. You can't debate recess or no recess. There's not much room for a debate. It's yes or no. It does require a majority vote. If, you know, let's say we're in, uh, we have a long agenda, five points, but we're in the middle of debating 
item number four, and somebody calls for a recess. <coughs> now then, it might be that the majority votes to, you know, let's stick to, stick in here, do number five as well, so that we can get out of, it, of here instead of having a recess, which will drag out the meeting even longer. So there's possibilities, there's a reason why there could be a vote, but a simple majority will do, and then there's a recess. The only amendment possible to recess is to maybe add a certain time. Let's say only recess for 10 minutes, recess until 9 o'clock, to make sure that there is a certain framework around the length of the recess. Um, the next session, uh, the next um, motion, the next privilege motion is to call for the meeting to adjourn. Imagine we've been meeting for a whole day and we still are only, let's say, in two thirds of the um, meeting agenda and we still have a number of important things to do, but people are starting to leave. Then it might be wise that somebody <coughs> raises the motion to adjourn to make sure that we still have enough people in the room or that people are still awake enough to be, to, have, to be in their right mind to make a decision, that they don't make decisions just to get over with it, but that they really are fresh and awake to make the right decisions which are right for the club or for the meeting at hand. Now, this motion to adjourn does need a second, so somebody has to agree that yes, we, we want to adjourn. It isn't debatable because once again it's a yes or a no. You adjourn or you don't. There's no debate possible, except if you want to decide on adjourning until a certain time, then you can debate until what time do we adjourn? When does this, does this meeting reopen? Because when you adjourn a meeting, then you could. Welcome. Mm -hmm. I could now lay on table. We'll do an exercise. I'll lay on them. To briefly introduce Eva Steinmassel. She's our division governor. And she's been in the two former sessions, so she knows a little bit about um, parliamentary procedure already. And she knows that when important people come in, we may decide to lay the topic on table. Which I do. Please take a seat. I don't think you're going to And so I now take it from the table again. It's like a, a record where you stop. Just to explain, it's like a record. You pick up the needle and then you put it back where you left off. Don't well, miss another record. I don't know where I left off. <laughs> um, yes, we were adjourning. So you can decide to adjourn when you see that the meeting needs to be stopped at this point in time, but that you haven't covered all the topics which are part of the meeting. So the last privilege motion is when you fix the time to adjourn. This obviously has precedence to adjourning the meeting because you can't adjourn a meeting if you need to fix a time to which to adjourn. So we might decide today that when we run over time, we adjourn the meeting to next week, Tuesday the 10th of April at 7.15, same time, same place here at Movimento. That's fix the time to adjourn. This again needs a second, it requires a, se a second, and you can debate on the time. People say, well, no, next Tuesday is not possible, Easter vacation, you may try and think of another date, but usually you fix the date to adjourn also when you haven't finished with the business at hand and you can't postpone it until the next regular meeting. So you need to discuss and find out to which time to adjourn when that is debated, then a majority vote will do. <laughs> okay. So to briefly wrap it up, the privilege motions in order of appearance, I'll take and a handout, maybe, around a little chart that you can use in order to know, because we'll do a little exercise after this. Should I have that? Yeah. Uh, this one you don't need. A little chart which explains the main motion, and then subsidiary motions, 
and the privilege motion, so the wrap up of three lessons. It also continues with um, with with what is going to be presented in the next two meetings. But the original main motion is point number thirteen, and everything up from that are in order of appearance. The subsidiary, seven <laughs> subsidiary motions, and then the five privilege motions. So if you look, you'll always see <coughs> what type the motion is in the second column. The third column shows whether the speaker has the right to interrupt without asking for the president to give him the right to speak. In the privilege motions, you have the right to interrupt the meeting, the privilege motions. Then you'll also be able to see whether the, that motion needs a second, whether it requires a second, whether it is amendable or not, if, some, if you can you know, amend the motion, the subsidiary motion or the privilege motion, and then whether it is debatable or not. In some cases, as we have seen, especially for the privilege motions, there is no point in debating a motion. And at, the, at last but not least, whether we need to vote about it. There's two cases when you call for the orders of the day or raise a question of privilege. There is no um, vote required. It's the president or the chairman's decision. Now, we'll continue with the exercise. So, um, to be, could you um, time another five minutes? I will remain the president of the session. Does anybody want to entertain a motion? Yeah. <coughs> I <coughs> propose a motion that we should buy a piano for our, for our club mm -hmm. so that we can have music and sing along sessions with our speaking okay. meetings. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I rephrase the motion. So Mel moves that the club buy a piano so that during our uh, next meetings we can have a piano player. Um, let's say support the speakers on stage. Possibly. Yes. <laughs> now, does anybody want to have uh, ask some questions or debate about this? Does anybody want to amend the motion? Does anybody have? I want to debate it. <laughs> yeah. My debaters. I mean, our club charter does not allow for, you know, music in the club because we are a public speaking club. So. I think it does not fit into our club goals. Am I allowed to respond to that? Yeah. Public speaking without music. You're living in the Stone Age. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that can enhance the experience for the audience is always welcome. I mean, you might if... Uh, should I then continue? <laughs> I mean, which would take us to everywhere. I mean, I think we have material from Toastmasters which is very useful. I think that is what the club should buy. And I think when we go into music, you know, the next time somebody might come out and say we want a mass of beer. <laughs> and so, you want to stick with the rules or do you want to go with a bit of creativity? I would like to go to previous question. Just simply hear you answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Can we... I agree. Can we come to a vote? All of you in favour of buying a piano? I would like to make an amendment for that. If we buy a piano which is not more than 100 euros. <laughs> so, okay, so the, the motion on the, on the, in the room is now the club should buy a piano of not more than 100 euros to entertain the audience while speakers are on stage. Uh, I, want to I want to amend it and say 100 euros with no maintenance cost for the next three years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the motion now in the room is we buy a piano, the club should buy a piano, no more than 100 euros, with no maintenance cost in the next three years to support members while speaking on stage. I would like to amend that motion as well. <laughs> and that, as well as that, we should have additional singing lessons for the speakers so that they can sing along when the piano is playing. I think that is an next motion. Separate motion. I would like to first close the business in the room. So the, the motion, the standing motion right now at this moment in time is that club buy a piano, no more than 100 euros costs, 
and for no, with no maintenance costs for the next three years to support the meetings. Uh, do we uh, want to debate on that or yeah. do we want to continue to I vote? I think this is an extremely important issue. I think we should take a recess. <laughs> <laughs> I think we take a recess till next week. <laughs> we can, do we want to take a recess until next week with this topic? Because it's a recess with a specific time, so I call for a vote. All of you in favor to recess until next week? I think. <laughs> All of you against? Those of you who have called for a recess until next week, please leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be here. The room will probably not be open. But that was your decision. Because <laughs> if you recess, then you mean, and until next week, it also means, you know, basic English, no? That's American English, it doesn't count. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. Ilke, I will make a motion to adjourn. Okay. As our time is up, <laughs> I, will second, I would like, if we have no business on the table, second. and we, do, we second. don't because second. we're in second. recess, second. I now call this meeting adjourned. Thank you.